Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Another Trump supporter that's uh then got himself into some fuckery is Tom Brady. I don't know if y'all mm-hmm. follow this. Uh, Tom Brady oh, and Bill have, have hired divorce lawyers. Okay. Um, and I, I, in listening to several people like kind of cover this story, uh, it it kind of took me to some more uh, just relatable topics. Uh. I wanted to look at uh in this divorce when you look at support versus enabling like is is there something to maybe Giselle enabling him to get to the point where he felt he could do no wrong in the relationship because throughout the relationship you got situations of him going on a boy's trip with Ben Affleck and the mistress of Ben Affleck when he knows that Giselle and the wife of Ben Affleck at that time were cool. You got, uh, and she, she and, the, and then the mistress is taking pictures with your Super Bowl rings on Instagram and all this crazy shit. Um, you got situations where she's like watching you get carted off the field with a concussion and she's sitting there, you know, like, hey, pleading with you, like, come spend time with us and the family. You got the like how much the supporting like when when does support cross the line of enabling a spouse like in any endeavor that they're in and i guess and that the, the first uh question i have for y'all when it becomes I think that a continuous cycle of the same exact behavior it doesn't change yeah. over time it's the same exact thing you're supporting the same thing over and over and over and over but seeing no change in the individual, seeing no different motivation in the individual, seeing no different passion in the individual. And it, it it's like a stagnant situation, but you keep supporting and you keep supporting to the place where the person sees that they can be complacent and still get support and not even try and get support. Yeah, that and then it switches. You 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 being the supportive person, you're not seeing it. But the person on the other end of that relationship, they've seen it and they've grown comfortable, so they know you're gonna keep playing the support. But that's when you gotta shake shit up, and that's the hardest part for a supporting person in some in many ways is to stop supporting, especially when you're supporting somebody that you love. That's real. Mm. No, I'm. I I feel like he hit it right on the dot. I was thinking. To me, I was just saying it kind of depends on the situation. Um, in general, with any relationship or whatever, when it gets to the point where, you know, everybody has a breaking point. It all depends on that person's breaking point. But I also think you, you as a person, probably got to look at your spouse without the title as the person themselves. For the, this is how Tom Brady thinks. I am the greatest player in football history. There is nothing anybody can say to me. Mm-hmm. I am not only that, I have I'm worth $300 million. I have done more for this the NFL than almost any play in the past couple of years. Indeed. What the hell can y'all say to me? Um, not only that, not only that, in a game where most people they could barely survive. They barely get to my age and still have the tank running. That's big fact. Not only that, I'm extra profitable. No matter wherever I go, if I did, it's it's a, a company's dream to have me as a sponsor. Like I feel what you're saying, yeah. Him, and not only that, what I've done supported your lifestyle. I might not have been there the whole time. But somehow, some way, it kind of supported lifestyle. I'm not saying what he not being there for the kids and everything is is not a 
bad thing or whatever, or um, unimportant, because it's definitely important or whatever. But at the same time, he, in the long run, is doing some things for that family. Like, their family is going to be able to do things that no other family can do, pretty much. But that doesn't supersede you being there for your kid. And, but in the mind of Tom Brady, God, football, family. Yeah. That's how he thinks. I only put God up there because he seems like he's that that his that's his PR work. So, uh, but in my mind, I I feel like it's football first, then everything else. <laughs> pretty much, I definitely agree, and um, uh, that kind of leads me to my next uh question: like, where do y'all see the line being drawn between like your ambition? and the time and being there that it takes to fulfill a family role. Like, where is the cutoff point between me chasing my dream and me pursuing my passion as far as my my endeavors, as far as my occupation or whatever, and me being there for my family? Like, where is that cutoff? Because, you know, you got to provide on one hand as a man. You got to make sure that the family is, you know, taken care of. You got to make sure that your legacy is straight and there's some generational wealth built up and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, when you miss some time, then you run into a situation like Tom Brady where it seems like his ambition is the main issue in it, thing where he's chasing this thing that's really important to him. But no. he's losing that family. That's a, That's... Uh, you I can look at that on the person. It, you can look at it two ways. Um, the age old saying is you can have time or you can have money. Mm-hmm. To amass the amount of wealth that he had, he had to put the amount of time into his career he did. But on the other hand, what did he lose on the family side? Reverse the situation. Put him at home for the the time they wanted him, or the time that quote unquote he should have been there, that he was playing. Where would he have been in his career, and what amount of wealth would he have amassed? So you got to look at from both ends. Um, in his particular excuse me, in his particular situation where he chose the career over the family time, I say it was more detrimental. Um, it is a way you can balance home, home life and work, regardless of what your um, financial tax bracket is. You can be a billionaire and still have time for your family. The right. thing is you gotta make that time for your family. Um, you can still be goal driven, have your passions, but you got to make the time. One has to be your primary. The other has to, time has to be made for that. If family is your primary objective, make time for the other thing you want. Make time for your goal and aspiration. Make time for that dream you you want to bring to fruition. Right. If If your career is your main, make time for your family. Be there for them birthdays. Be there for them school plays be there you got to make that sacrifice in that in, in in that career so you can be there for that family but either way whatever goal or whatever path you choose your sacrifices have to be made you have to be willing to make those sacrifices if you value both things now if you don't give two shits about your family shit go hard on your career don't give a fuck what you miss if you only care about your family go hard stay at home all the time but you're gonna have some bills come up so make your choice wisely well, realize either way you go, it's worthwhile, but you have to make sacrifices to make both work equally. Go ahead, Pat, and then I uh, I do have a take on that on on that piece for sure. Um, I was gonna say that any any 
filthy, rich, successful person has this problem, has this issue. Like, I, I feel like when you get a certain point of corporate success in a certain tax bracket and a certain amount, and you got a certain businesses and industries under you like that, your time is going to be taken away. It's a different mode because it's not like it's a it's a nine to five thing or whatever. It's whenever that phone call rings and you make that deal, pretty much. Um, and then along with that, you can, with it being football and the f- physical aspect or whatever of it, you're taking that much time plus your training, plus you're talking about deals and shit like that whatever that's the same thing with any other industry if it was a rapper or or a singer or whatever it would be the same problem because you got tours just like football has seasons and stuff like that and and if even if that if it's not even a talent-based industry you're just a executive in general you gotta you're, you're going to place to place you're taking flights to go to meetings to meet up with different people to make different deals and stuff like that like when you have that type of lifestyle there will be a hindrance on the family part of it mm-hmm. like it's just not going to be one of those situations where y'all going to have sunday dinner every sunday if people still have Sunday dinner. It is not gonna be one of those situations where everybody gathers after school and work or whatever. It's just one of those things. And that's not one of those things that you get to pick. Yeah. Or, or whatever. You, you don't you don't just like, all right, um, I get the I'm gonna pick the more family side or whatever. It's either you're all you're already in the field. Mm-hmm. And you're getting opportunities as they come because mm-hmm. you don't expect those opportunities to come and mm-hmm. you're taking it as is and you're now addicted to opportunities when they pop up because it's still that same feeling and you're just going with the flow of it. And it's just up to you mentally, subconsciously and spiritually to realize, hey, hey, I need to take this time off for these people that I love pretty much. But you're always going to have that situation. Especially if you have a family that grew up into that situation like Tom Brady. Mm. I I definitely agree with uh, both you and Face on uh, the majority of the points y'all made. Um, I think I, I think what's necessary in these situations, man, and, and people don't people forget that like basically what you're looking at is a living contract and a living will when you get into a marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is as passions, as circumstances change, you should always have an end goal in mind. So like, say we are, say it is me and Betty Sue and we both serve her somewhere. Right. All right, we should have an end goal in mind of like when we get to this point, we gonna be straight. You feel me? Mm -hmm. If I now get a job working for a tech company, so now I'm making six figures all of a sudden, and you still a server, we need to reconfigure that conversation and have an end goal in mind that's shared. Like, all right, when we get to this point we straight and you need to continue to have those conversations as your circumstances change as people lose jobs gain jobs change ambitions all of a sudden now you are a, a, a day trader and you'd have made 30 million dollars in the past three years all of a sudden like you know what i mean like we need to be continually changing this goal so that at some point and at every point we are on the same page as far as like all right this is the exit strategy. These are the non-negotiables. These are the moments where like, when this happened, this triggers this motion. So that way I know what's happening. I think what, what, what we, what, what people can fuck up is like, Tom Brady gets with Giselle. At that moment, 
she's still kind of, you know, in the height of her modeling career where there's no real end in sight. Like she still can go wherever she want to go. That <clears throat> He's at the height of his football career because he's at his peak in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Neither one of them is old enough to really be worried about retirement. They know it's going to come, but they're not like at the point where like, oh, you know, in the next couple of years, we're going to have to worry about this. So let's go ahead and get married. Like, we straight. We we will figure it. Like, we, we know we're going to have to talk about it, but it ain't pending. And I think what mm -hmm. happens is you have two different trajectories almost. You have Giselle, where she's still a famous model, but it's nowhere near the demand that it was when she was at her peak. And you have Tom Brady, who, like, had a dip and then shot right back up to an almost higher peak. Like he, he, it's ridiculous. Like, and I think when you're at two different places in your career, there's vital conversations that I feel like they must have missed had to, because you don't get to the point where you're hiring divorce lawyers, lawyers without being on a completely different page. And we can't figure that shit out. And my thing is like, if, if, Either one of two things happened in their relationship. Either they never had a plan for the for the exit strategy. So basically resentment just kept boiling up, but you never really had a concrete thing. So now it's just like, I'm going to keep stringing you along as long as I can. And as long as I can keep hobbling my ass out there and throwing this football and winning some chips, I'm going to keep trying it. And as long as you keep sticking around one more year, I'm going to keep pulling it one more year. or they agreed upon a hard exit strategy. And Tom said, fuck that. I want to get an eighth ring. And if that's the case, you deserve it. You deserve to lose your family. Because as a man, you got to stand on whatever you tell your, like if you, if you commit to something to your family, unless you've had a conversation where your wife agrees to something different, then you got to stay, hold steadfast to that agreement. Whether you like it or not, because at that point, the family is dependent on that decision because they've made accommodations, decisions, and all of that based around your decision. And I think that's what Tom fucked up. I think Tom did something like that. I don't think Tom ever... He just said, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's cool. But in his head, he, he was like, if I can continue being Tom Brady, I'm going to continue being Tom Brady because the more I go, the harder it's going to be to break my record. Indeed. And, and I, and I think that's, that's all it, I think that's all it is to it. And I, how is it? Um, we, I hate, to, I hate to say this. Okay. Just say it. Nigga, we pod. Men, men, when they get older or whatever, it's like they continue to build because we have no choice to build or whatever to get attention and stuff like that from women. And then when you finally get to that point that you can always get attention, especially if you like have a lot of money and stuff like that, that arrogance can build up and it can build up an ego real as like i'm not saying i shouldn't say that man but i like at the while you could be like no yeah i i feel like tom i think it's just with him it's just like he has mad i think if you put somebody else in tom brady's position they would probably choose their family or whatever I, I, I almost, I, I, but if, if, I mean, but if you have a person, it's a bit about their ego a bit more, it's going to be the same result. Right. I think what it got to be is in any situation, right? If you become a parent, you have to set balance. Mm -hmm. 
I ain't mad at, like, I believe everybody should chase their passion, chase their dream. If you have a goal for your family, you should chase that. However, there has to be a limit to it to where you now give back to said family the time you took away. True. And it has to be at a point where the people that are there can appreciate. Like, if you're going to take away the entire you're going to miss the first steps and the, the the first meal and the first time the baby do this, then you better be there for them teenagers or vice versa. Like there has to be a give back to where the people that are in your life feel like they are in your life. If it's, if they feel like they are always the second fiddle and there's no safety mm-hmm. time for them, you're going to always have a rebellion. That's in any relationship familial husband and wife uh friend like co-worker like it, it go back to that when we used to talk when we were talking about parasites and uh symbiote like there's two types of ways you can reinteract but the parasitic one always is going to lead to some turmoil because somebody is not getting nothing they just getting mm-hmm. nothing. And I think that's what happened there is Tom kept going to that well, like, she going to stick with me one more year, one more year, one more year. And, like, she told you, no, I ain't got one more year, and you didn't listen. Like, sometimes you just got to listen and just be like, all right. Or if you cool with it, then you cool with it. Sometimes divorce can be healthy. Sometimes it could be he didn't really want to be there no more anyway, and this is his Mm -hmm. out. This is probably healthy because it leads them to not be sitting in the house arguing in front of the kids. So, whatever. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah. I, I really feel like with these relationships, man, we got to come down to a point of, like, people being honest. And, and even not e- and even on the supporting side, like, if she was enabling him by continuously saying, oh, it's okay, and she really didn't feel that way. No, be an honest supporter. Tell me, hey, I got your back, but to this limit. Because when we hit here, if you do these things, if you break these rules, if you whatever, I can't do that. Let it be known. Like, treat relationship not on a transactional level, but on a contractual level where there's some agreements made that don't get broken. And if you do that, you are always going to have a, a good, solid foundation. You know what I mean? Like, if we agree, hey, we're we going we gonna to have arguments, whatever, but as long as we honest and as long as we can come to a compromise, we good, cool, then that's what it is. And that means that everything outside of that, we good. You know what I mean? But, like, you got to have them agreements, man, on, on whatever the relationship is. Yeah, and I think that leads to more prosperity because now everybody feels like I know what it is. Like most people can deal with some shit if they know it's coming. If I see the fastball, I can hit the fastball. Mm-hmm. But if everything says it's a curveball and then a fastball swings in out of nowhere, then I'm not prepared for that. That's harder to deal with. That's going to create more disruption in the space that's happening. You know what I mean? And I think that, that's the key, man. Just communication, bro. Niggas just got to talk to their wives. Like, open your mouth and your ears. I you told you, I'm tired of this shit, Nick. Sure. Uh, Listen and pay attention. That part, that boy, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, headline. Listen and and pay attention, because a lot of people listen, like they hear what you said, but they don't pay attention. They don't give it the credit it deserves. They don't give it the credence and the energy and whatever the action step from that hearing that it deserves. If I hear you say you are tired or something, my brain should enact a protocol if you mean something to me that says. How do we alleviate that fatigue? 
You feel what I'm saying? From a care point of view, just just a general uh-huh. well being, like if Randall and Larry are chilling, and Larry keep telling Randall, stop, stop mentioning my foot. You know I got this club foot. I'm subconscious about it. It ain't funny to me. I don't like it. I'm tired of this shit. Then Randall should, as a good friend, say, all right, Larry, let me leave that damn foot alone. You can joke about something else, man. My bad. Not continue. Your to- ugly ass teeth. So if old girl told Tom Brady, hey, I'm tired of this. I don't want you to keep going out there. This brings me fear. This is a problem for me. At some point, you got to have a make a compromise, make a commitment, and then follow through on said commitment. That's all life is about. Compromises, commitments, and then following through on said commitment. If you continue to be willing to do those three things, you will win at every relationship, at every situation. Business goes wrong when somebody either is not willing to compromise, they don't want to make a commitment, or they don't follow through on the said commitment. Relationships fuck up when that happens. In the in nature, mutations happen when a damn gene says, "I'm not gonna goddamn compromise, commit, or follow through on this commitment. I'm gonna try to do something else." God damn it! Now that's a fucked up sale. Like the like every level of life, it has to be them three things working. That's how you get unity and shit flowing and. Harmony. The gears working together. That one gear say, fuck this, I'm going the other way. God damn it, that you done fucked up everybody. It's your shit. Fucked up the church's money. It's your goddamn house, Lord. And now, stop being no, fucking was... greedy. You don't need no more damn rings, nigga. Go sit down somewhere. Be a daddy. Uh, I'm kissing your, kissing your grown ass kid in the mouth. All I'm saying is, I think these celebrities marriages don't be like traditional marriages. I think they just all business deals. And that's, that's how And Tom Brady was looking at it as I'm out of this business deal. If you got to the point that you got mistresses and the mistresses is wearing your ring and no, you're not even caring. Then Affleck's mistress. But oh, no, man. You have a woman wearing your Super Bowl rings on a jet and your wife ain't there. Like nah. there's certain protocols that you just know is going, and you're not a regular nigga. You're a nigga that every you know the media is going to make extra shit. So now your wife got to be embarrassed and talk about and keep answering to it. Like it puts her like it's certain protocol that just common sense as a person. Let me not put you in a fucked up position. I know this is a place where you're self-conscious. Let me not put this on blast so everybody now keeps asking you about this thing that you're self-conscious about. Sure, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's on a huge company. That's on like, like me and you homeboy. You, you, uh, shit. You got a pimple and you got a photo shoot coming up. Let me not go talk to TMZ about this pimple. So now everybody asks you about the pimple that could have been covered up with makeup and you ain't got to worry about. It. But now you like you got to keep answering to this shit. That's some shit that shit. Yeah. shit. Now you got to keep answering to it. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's putting extra stress and extra action steps in your life that won't dare. It's more work you got to do that you ain't even asked for. True. And if I care about you, why would I put you in that position? And, and when you talk about marriage, that's all marriage is. It's a business relationship with somebody you fuck. You're sexually wow. attracted to the person that you're doing business with. Because that's really what it is. You're making business decisions that, that will affect you personally, financially for the rest of your life. Yeah. But it's with the person that you also get the fuck all the time. It's a contractual thing. I agree to share finances and bodily fluids with you and whatever responsibilities and whatever responsibilities come from these finances and fluids. I, I agree to and take them with you for the rest of my life. That is what you are contractually obligated to when you marry. That is the, that is it boy. I don't care what vows you took. That is literally what you saying. 
to the government and to whatever God you serve. I am going to take this person and we going to share finances and fluids and whatever consequences come from them finances and fluids being shared, we going to take them on together. For the rest fine of the ass day. and finance. <laughs> That's all it is, bro. It's simple. Finance and finance. People be making shit hard. No, you and your woman is this. Can we coexist financially together? That includes living expenses, how you live your lifestyle, how that's going to cost me money. If you are a person that break a lot of shit, if you mess, mess it, if you overly clean, if you like expensive shit, whatever that entails financially. And then we share, we sharing bodily fluid. So your monogamy level, your ability to use birth control, your, your all of that, your your ability to be a good parent, because if we share bodily fluids and them shits connect and make a baby with it, then like, that's all it is. It, it's those things. And we agree that whatever happens from this shit, we going to hold it down together. We're going to figure it out. That's it. Okay. Tom Brady, that was all you had to do. Sit down. Tom Brady. You. And talk about the fact. get your shit together. Yeah, the real, real, real Brett Fall today. Fine. Real Brett Fall. Fluids. That's the title of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all we've been talking about. Financial fluids, man. Get your shit together.